everyone, I'm Tony Lontis and this is the Everyday Business Show. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> Is that possible? That was the question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Everyday Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Lontis, and today we have a very special interviewee, Barbie Layton. Now, I want to tell you a little bit, but I don't want to tell you too much because um, I want to have a very intuitive interview with Barbie because that's who she is. Now, this amazing individual is a global force of nature, and I'm delighted to have her on the show today. Barbie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you again, Tony. Now, Barbie, let's go back to the beginning. Now, for a number of the people that I talked to, their gifts were, in essence, apparent to them from quite an early age. And all of the people that I talked to have very different journeys. Can you start by just telling the audience a bit about your personal journey? Absolutely. So I feel that you're absolutely right. I think most people are born with these innate gifts. I know there's the whole nature versus nurture, you know, mm, like whole yes. thing back and forth. But I still do believe that we come in with these innate gifts. I also think that everybody does have gifts. It's just something in the sense of where you get conditioned by the 3D reality and told that you can't. And it was case in point, one of my very first memories of having kind of like extra sensory perception is when I was a child under the age of five and my mother put me down for a nap. And I looked over at her and I could see almost like an x-ray where I could see like these blood and like her, her skeleton. I wow. could see all this stuff that was moving around. And I remember trying to describe it with, you know, a limited vocabulary. And I told my mom, I can see all these things moving under your skin and I see your teeth. And she just said, no, you can't. And then basically it was like, boom, I turned it off. But then what I found was that my energy was so different from other people um, you know, created a lot of situations of bullying in the sense of where my oh, intelligence, was like, like it was crazy off the charts. I mean, I got tested out and like when I was eight years old at having a college educated vocabulary and intelligence. So it was something of where, you know, this little eight year old body is trying to hold all of this energy in. But I was also one of those people when I look back, I was a know it all. You know, it's like I was just wanted to spout that out to all people and people didn't like that. So therefore, of course, you know, I mean, as a child, we don't think about that. We just want to share everything that we have. We don't understand why people don't want to receive that. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that a lot of times my energy was so intense that I would affect rooms that I would go into. So if I was in a really good mood, you know, everybody was having a great party. It was, you know, rah, rah, rah. It was fabulous. But if I was in an angry mood or a bad mood, people would start arguing. Things would start happening that were really, really negative. So I started to feel responsible for other people's like experiences and people like, you know, are you in a good mood? And, you know, oh, are you ready to do this? But it's something of where my my mood would literally reflect and, and have everybody else respond to it. And I wasn't sure whether or not that was everybody that had that experience or not. But it's like when you're a big personality, my issue hasn't been that I'm not good enough. My issue has always been that I'm too much. And so if I'm too much, it's always like tone it down, tone it down, just turn the volume down. And so for a lot of places I did. And so by turning the volume down, it, it really is a disservice to yourself. But you know, nobody teaches you how to, you know, like harness these things. I mean, I know we have Harry Potter, we have X-Men Academy and superheroes and things like that, which are all fanciful, mm -hmm. but it's still, there's not really the methodical ability to sit there and train your intuition. It's not something where people look at that in that sense. But there are 14 intelligences that they've already been able to assess. That if you take a test on that, um, like, for example, being able to be moved by nature, standing at the Grand Canyon and seeing a majestic sunset and just your whole body is just vibrating yes. with this 
ecstasy of yes. just this overwhelming emotion, but not everybody feels that. That That is a certain synthesis of expressing and understanding that kind of a frequency. And so for me, ultimately, it was not until about my 20s, I just kind of dabbled in some different things. I've always been a seeker. I mean, I read those, all of the world history of, of religions when I was a child. It's like I was mm. a, a I devoured books because I just wanted to know about different people's experiences. And I always wanted to know about different cultures and different ideas and things that were different than mine. I wanted to know how people thought about that, but it enabled me to then become a global citizen with a lot of the travels that I've done. I've lived on three continents. I visited in almost 40 countries, been to every state in the United States. I think from there, it just opened my eyes up to that, the differences, but also the similarities between people. And then because people were constantly coming to me for advice on how to do this and they would all come true, I'd have people knocking on my door sometimes two in the morning, like, please tell me about my dad. Like, I need to know about my dad. And I was like, okay. But I never wanted to charge for it because it always felt kind of weird, this whole, if it's, you know, something that's God given that you don't want to charge for it but a professional athlete charges for their stuff, right? So therefore, in the sense too, that's how I turned it into a profession only recently. Barbie, I just want to drop back into the comment from your mum, and I'm curious to know, do you think that mum had some gifts of her own that were buried really deeply and she immediately recognised? Do you think any of that was in place back then? It's possible because I know for her, she loves angels. So she has yeah. angel marginal statues. She has, angel, you know, she's a beautiful metal angel keychain. She has just angels all over the place. And there's a lot of things of where people have oftentimes said to, that she's got incredibly good luck. And it just seems like her, her special angel, you know, like figures things out for her. So I think that there is the the belief system in that, that she's kind of specially touched because my mother's a, an amazing human being. She's done amazing things in the world and yes. um, been very exemplary. So I would definitely say that, but she didn't ever cultivate it or get into like kind of the depths of like, I mean, I've been studying this for 30 plus years yeah. and really trying to cultivate my gifts so I can help others. Barbie, do you think that you had, um, uh, that you were gifted with ancient wisdom as well as high intellect absolutely that's actually yeah. one of my taglines that i like to use is yeah. i call it ancient wisdom for today because i'm a total like history nerd like when it comes to egyptology i am like obsessed with like you know the middle kingdom the old kingdom the pharaohs all that kind of stuff too because mm -hmm. there's so much esoteric wisdom that came back from you know egypt i read the you know the whole the the, the pyramids in cambodia you've got the aztecs the mayans the yes. toltecs you have so many different even Ancient like wisdom yes and even like in south korea i didn't realize that 100 years ago they really focused on shamanic focuses it wasn't you know it wasn't until the churches came in they had yes. the medicine women and the matchmakers and the people that really did the geomancy of where they were looking at the you know the chi of the energy of the, of the mountains and things like that and so i think in all of our our cultures we've always had mystics and sages and oracles and throwing bones and reading tea leaves and mm -hmm. coffee grounds and Ancient throwing the wisdom. bones everything but we became arrogant we thought somehow yeah. that modern wisdom was, was no longer something yeah that we don't need all that old old gibberish stuff like that too but i think the beautiful thing in the 21st century is that it is a fusion it's a fusion of the ancient yes, wisdom Bobby. with yes. the technology it's almost like it's a creating a brand new version of the human which i think is really exciting it is exciting um and something else i wanted to touch on today was it was to talk a little bit about feminine energy and feminine wisdom because i'm sure that you'll agree with me that there is um almost a rebirth of ancient feminine wisdom and the rising of feminine energy and the appreciation i go back to your words about charging for your gifts but in ancient times, women were the people that you went to for healing, birth, death, all of those things, yeah. because women were the holders of that wisdom. And yes. I think that it's important that we acknowledge that these are gifts and there should be an energy exchange and money is just energy. So I absolutely think that those gifts are incredibly important across the globe especially now and that they should be we should be remunerated rather 
when did you start to discover that uh, you could help lots more people with your gifts? Was there a point in maybe your 20s that that became really apparent to you, Bobby? I would say no, not in my 20s. The thing that I think has been miraculous about my journey that a lot of people resonate with and can identify with is that a lot of this is very much a shift in the last few years. I think that, mm -hmm. that what happened is that I really believe that, that Zoom and the whole concept of video conferencing is a great equalizer because you Absolutely. can be a, from a country that has billions of dollars or you can be a homeless person. You can be either one and you still occupy the same exact space on the Zoom that anybody else does. Yeah. And so what I found was that I literally, that was my year of 2020. It's just like, okay, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lean in and really like try to see how I can connect despite the fact that we're all indoors because everyone was in the same situation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, I really went on this journey of self improvement, doing all these courses. But what was beautiful about that is that as people started to really click into these different groups, you know, the celebrities that were celebrities, they wanted to connect with their audiences and they didn't, yes. they didn't need money. And the musicians just wanted to go on and play music for people. And, you know, there were just a lot of things that were happening. So I figured if anything was coming my way and I got invitations for things, I said yes to it all. And then I manifested the the funds to be able to support all of that as it was going along as well. And so from there, it was like one door after another, after another, mm -hmm. after another door kept opening. But what was really phenomenal that was really eye opening is that every time I entered into a new community that I was like graciously brought into, I already knew 30 to 40% of the people in them. Mm -hmm. That was the big mind blowing thing in the sense of where it's that birds of a feather flock together yes. because the people that I'm around are, you know, like, I mean, I got introduced to you, you know, by Shannon Procise who my yes. door, but it's that whole concept of the heart centered conscious entrepreneurs that really want to be of service to humanity while they're making a living to be financially abundant themselves mm. that I kept finding those people that were residing at those frequencies. And that was the thing that was the most exciting because at this point now, it's like being so resource rich with having been invited to so many different tables. Mm -hmm. it, it is so beautiful, but it's based in, in, exclusively on reputation and integrity. Yes. I mean, I didn't do, I don't even have an Instagram still. It's like, for yeah. me, this was all by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And so by allowing myself though, to be open, and this is what you're talking about with the feminine. Yes. I realized that I was receiving impaired. I had been mm -hmm. giving, 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 giving. I'm mm -hmm. burnt out. You know, I had a chronic illness that like shut me down. And then it was like, okay, now I'm ready to have that reciprocity of the giving and the receiving. And that was the most Beautiful. important part. And then by opening that space up, I just, attracted all these beautiful people and experiences and abundance and things that were like so beyond. I mean, even being, I was on four New York Times Square billboards from June 21st to July 21st. I mean, just to stand there in front of like your your face, 48 feet tall, you know, <laughs> circling with Kim Kardashian in was like- In all your gloriousness, Barbie. It was amazing. In all your gloriousness, absolutely. I really want to delve into the um, elevation of our frequency in terms of manifesting what we want. Yes. So you've actually lived and breathed this. Tell us about the, your journey in manifesting your dreams. So I think that most people have very specific ideas about um, you know, spirituality coming from certain countries, and they have a, you know, a dominion over that, etc. But you, what you're talking about the ancient wisdom mm. for today, there are the solfeggio frequencies, which is the natural scale of the, the eight notes. And those ones basically actually became heretical in the 1300s, because the Catholic Church saw all of these spontaneous healings that were occurring that they didn't need them any longer. So our traditional scale is very different. And so everything is resonant in those different things. And Nikola Tesla talks about energy, frequency, mm -hmm. and vibration. It's mm -hmm. being the three important parts of the of the entire universe. So I have been chanting or singing Hue, which is 528 hertz for the last, since 1992 was when I discovered that. And that doesn't belong to any particular organization or religion, but it's mm -hmm. found in every culture internationally. That's the, the thing that's so amazing. 528? Yes, because yes. the Hue... If you've got Allah Hue, Alleluia is Allah Hue together. If you put in all of these different things, you've got the Hu Na, which is the ancient Hawaiian philosophy of the, of the kahunas. All of these cultures, I did a whole like 
piece on it on the Best You magazine. All these cultures, if you look for it, the hue is incorporated in all these different places. And the the um, high priest used to chant the hue all night above the Sphinx. That was one of their things with the mystery school. And so by having that, they literally had the opportunity to be able to breathe that out. But it is the frequency of DNA, love, and creativity. And manifestation occurs anything over 500 hertz. So gratitude is 539 hertz. Yes. And what's great, like for your audience, is that even a, an entry point that's free, if you go onto YouTube and you Absolutely. search up 528 hertz or hue, you will find amazing hundreds, content. Hundreds. And they're all free. And that's the part about where it's like, it only takes 20 minutes a day to be able to put that into your frequency, but it's not one that's been very well known. And in a lot of ways, it's almost like when you find it, it's meant for you. Yes. And that's, it's, it's a, you know, but it's that, again, it's the ancient wisdom for today. And there are a lot of people that deal with different, they, they think of planes of existence. It's the one that literally, if we're divine beings having human experiences, it's the one that literally overlays between those two things of the physical and the spiritual. So it's mm -hmm. the one that connects us completely. Yeah. So by chanting that and healing that with people, it's almost like when I do healing sessions for people, I blast that frequency into them and it almost like crumbles all these old calcified things that no longer need to be there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a Pollyanna. I'm not here to tell anybody that my life is perfect by any means. I mean, this has been quite a journey and a metamorphosis. Has, However, yes. it's still, I really believe that when we have our gifts that are, that are basically innate that are God given, whatever you want to call that, or they come from source. It's something about that by being able to cultivate it to the highest ability and to be able to then serve others with it, it elevates it in a way in the sense of where it's almost like you can't lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the good thing about the day and age that we're living in currently is that there is such interest around uh, the spiritual and healing music and meditation and raising vibration that it's conceivable in this generation Barbie that we can change a lot of things across the globe do you believe that as well I do and that's something too that I've had on podcasts that I've done interviews with one of the things that I demystify it is the sense it's like there are a lot of people that think if they belong to a certain religious organization or they're an atheist or they're this or they're that that somehow oh this isn't for me oh I can't do this in my I they have a lot of limitations yes but I've had I've had many clients that have been you know traditional Muslim women in the Middle East with the traditional burqa or mm -hmm. different people in South Africa or they're in Australia or they're in Europe etc where they're all these or in Asia but they have different cultural norms and beliefs but what mm -hmm. I've distilled it down to is that you and I right now are in agreement that we are on electrical outlets, whether it's 110 or 220. We don't disagree with that. And it doesn't have a dogma or theocracy that's nope. connected to it. And we're also in agreement that we're both on a on an internet device of some sort, or there's mm -hmm. a phone, a tablet, or a, a, a laptop. Mm -hmm. We're also in agreement in the sense that we're both on Zoom and we both connected with the same number. We dialed the number, which is yes. like dialing a frequency. Yes. So you and I, you're, you're in Australia and I'm in California right now yes. on two different days, according to the calendar. <laughs> but we are in agreement that those three things are true. And so by being able to distill it down to that, it takes the woo-woo out of it being it spiritual does. at all. And it's not necessary to look at it like that any longer because it doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to everyone. It belongs to everyone. Can I just say to Barbie that we um, set up this appointment a little while ago. There was no discussion about what we were going to wear. Um, and we certainly didn't discuss the points that we were going to talk about. But yeah. if you look at Barbie and I today, Barbie has blue and gold. Um, I'm in blue and gold. Yes. There are no coincidences, audience. No. I'm just, no. when two, particularly when two women agree to do something together, there is a powerful energy just around that fact. I love men and I'm not being in any way, shape or form derogatory to men, but I actually okay. believe that women are powerhouses and particularly when they co-create or get together in agreement or have a conversation powerful things can happen yes 
And I yeah. know for for Barbie that her trajectory has changed in, in the last couple of years, Barbie. So you've actually, you're on a higher, higher trajectory than you were when we probably first met, which is going back a little while now. Um, I want you to tell the audience about some of the things that have happened in particular in the last six months that you dreamed <laughs> about and never perhaps thought would happen, but they have actually transpired. So I have something that, you know, when you go through old boxes and things yes. like that, you know, in your home and you just think to yourself, because I was like, because when, so I became a international bestselling author with the Women Gone Wild series in on June 8th. So we had yes. our, our red carpet event in Las Vegas and we did an internet or a United States tour mm. that come in, in these four billboards on 48th and Broadway that's literally yes. on the stack where the Coca-Cola is. I mean, yes. it's like the most iconic Exciting. place. Yeah, it's, it was just so, but I was thinking to myself, I don't have anything, like most of us, we call from our past. We say, okay, well, mm. when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to be this or a singer, an actress, or I wanted to be a lawyer. It's like people have those things that they call from the past. But I'm thinking to myself, I don't think I ever called for it being an international bestselling author. I don't think I called for it any kind of billboards. But then I was going through some old boxes and I remembered that this right here, these four <gasps> journals, when I was 10 years old, I wrote a oh, novel. I wrote. And so, and it was about a girl going back in time. That was like the little house in the prairie, a girl going back in time to the 1860s in the middle, Midwest of the United States. But she had all these solar powered cool things that she helped mm -hmm. people with. So she had first aid kits and all these other things that people, they thought she was like, you know, like a witch. Then they thought, oh, she's a savior. It was, it was like this, this big, yeah. huge thing. Mm -hmm. But then I found this little one which was called a confused little girl. And it said by world renowned author, brilliantly planned, says the New York Times, um, you've done it again, Chicago Tribune exciting, so suspenseful, LA Times, and then on the best-selling list now for its eight week at number one. I wrote this in honors English when I was 14 years old. Oh. And I just, when I got it, I was having it in my hands, it's almost like a 40 year manifestation, <sighs> but it's in no way different than in an acorn or a, you know, yes. a seed being yes. put down yes. that becomes this giant oak tree eventually because it has those places. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm on all these international platforms. I've been doing, you know, TV. I've had yeah. like new opportunities now to be a host for another TV show. Oh, I have a lot of Bobby. things that are going into syndication, mm -hmm. you know, but my big love is still having the time to be able to do, you know, my soul print energy sessions, because that's something of where I reset people back to, to getting rid of all those limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I know you have firsthand knowledge of what that yes. feels like, but it's still yes. being able to, like, if you're old enough to remember those little Polaroids or the little um, mm -hmm. Kodak, little yep. Kodachromes, the little slides, and we put them on the carousel and we just clicked on them and we projected them on the screen. Yep. And so for me, I feel like my gift is that I have the carousel there and I literally pull one of those slides yes. out and then I say, okay, this is the memory I'm getting here. And then after that, this whole vision comes forward and then it becomes like everything comes into focus. And then mm -hmm. from there, it can be completely just cleaned up, wiped away, disintegrated, and then upgraded into the new version of yourself that you want to be next. And that's Absolutely. to me, like people to be do that. It, it's like, to me, it's like, I feel like I have like the coolest job in the world because it's like, and people have these memories that are lodged places where they hadn't thought about them in decades. And they're like, how is that even possible? And it's like, well, this is what you're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. That's a residual from 40, 50 years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes, Barbie, there is even more older stuff that we hang on to that intergenerational going back and yes. back and back. And for many women... Um, what we call the witch wound, where we were castigated or killed for speaking out or having healing um, gifts or foresight gifts. Um, for many women, that still remains in a lot of our, our DNA. And But you can clear it, can't you, Barbie? That's yes. the purpose of your soul blueprint um, sessions, isn't it? That you take people back and clear their frequency or clear their energy and heal some of that stuff so they can go forward as a better version of themselves. Absolutely. And that's the part too, in the sense of where, what you're talking about, 
I call that an ancestral lineage clearing of where you go back through the ancestral lineage in the sense of where you either had war or famine. Like you said, the women who were not able to speak up, you have, I mean, the Spanish inquisition. I just did a clearing with somebody about a month ago who couldn't breathe properly. Uh And there's something that, um, you know, in the, in the Puritans and England, and I think in Australia as well, there was something called pressing Mm -hmm. and they would literally, they would put a board on you and then they would just continue putting stones until Mm -hmm. literally you just Mm -hmm. got crushed to death. And I could feel that this had happened to this this person. And I yeah. said, okay, I want you to really breathe into this. And then from there, it was like, it just shifted the energy completely to the point of where they had the ability, they weren't feeling this, this heaviness on that. Mm-hmm. And why those particular past experiences come forward at those moments, that I still am not 100% clear with. And but- will we ever know why, you know, it's, I actually think about this sometimes, Barbie, and think, why now? Why didn't, why didn't I have that person, um, connect with me and heal that portion of my life years ago and then the thought always occurs to me that there is divine timing and sometimes there's things that you need to learn before you are ready um, to be go through that healing sometimes you have to go through certain things before you get to the point that that healing is so it, it I actually really believe that divine timing is paramount in our lives and and that's not something that we need to choose or even really think about too often just no. the belief that divine timing is evident in our lives is enough isn't it yes and that's something of where behind me is a new yeah. logo called science of science and i'm really excited about that because that's my that, that to me is my life's work that's my legacy that i feel like i'll leave in this planet but it's an online course that I, is unlike anything I've really heard about, which is really about how to track the signs and synchronicities and the dreams, be able to look Mm. at those as patterns. And once you can actually track them and have them written down, where then you can kind of see those things. I mean, I don't know if you've had this experience, but you know, I have sometimes these crazy dreams and I write them in a dream journal, but then I can go back and I can look five years ago that that exact thing happened or this, this occurred. And then, but by being intentional on that, it was in 20, like about 20, 11 2012 where I was on a family vacation to Key West in Florida mm-hmm. and initially I was seeing kind of like one 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 and then one 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 and there was like yeah. the, you know it was a few times that I saw it but it was something of where I, I got a piece of paper and I'm like okay I just need to start doing those scratch lines with the like the line for the five uh-huh. and after I started paying attention there were over 120 in that one like you know trip that was less than a few hours That's and so powerful. it was just this blatant it's like okay are you paying attention are you paying attention are you paying attention and so it's kind of like i know it's almost like spirituality on ocd and not everyone likes this kind of a concept because they think it's too much to be able to track but mm-hmm. you can do it with a voice note you can do it with anything of where you just kind of pop it off and then different things but what happens is that we have our own individual lexicon mm-hmm. and the universe i feel is always communicating with us in some sort of a way so like for me though Yes. And I have moonshot songs of where when they come on the radio, I know that I'm getting inner guidance of saying, you're on track, add a girl, keep going, keep Aww. going. But then I have signs that tell me, you know what, there's something around you that you need to be aware of, pay attention. This is something of where it's caution. And so it got to a point of where I would, I would drive to work and I would literally see sometimes six to seven signs in in a row on different places on a sticker on a billboard on a license plate but it would spell out full grammatically correct english sentences it wasn't gibberish i got to a point of where i could literally see all those different things and i trained other people to do that as well i still have people that i know who still use that method and so you know they said you know you really really need to teach this to the masses because having that opportunity to be able to do that so initially I'm planning on doing it just as an online course of where people track it themselves and they start to look at those things. But it's also important that the dream dictionaries and the angel number books and that kind of stuff, there's nothing wrong with that, but they're very generic. And so mm-hmm. if you see five, five, five and you go, oh, that's automatically transformation. And, oh, I see three, three, three. That means, you know, father, mother, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a mistake if you're really being intentional about learning this stuff to be able to focus on that being generic like that. So it's yeah. your own lexicon so if your grandfather loved foxes yes and every time he saw a fox it was something of where you knew your grandfather's energy was close to you then you would tune into that of like fox in your lexicon means grandfather 
Yes. So every time you would see that, That's it would mean that. That's such a great point about the use of generic um, attachments to 111 or, or whatever yes. it is. It, yes. You actually have to figure out what it means to you. So For generically, you. Yes. it might mean this, this, and this. But yes. to you, it might actually mean something different. So that's a very good point, Barbie. Correct. Um, I have um, just glanced at the clock and like, oh my goodness, we're nearly out of time and I can't get off this interview without making sure that the audience know how to connect with you, Barbie. So what's the best way to connect with you? Um, well, if you'd like to be on the wait list to be able to be part of the Science of Science, you can go to barbielayton.com. And if you want to book a session with me or apply to be a television guest, you can go to Cal <laughs> Calendly. <laughs> Calendly.com slash intuitive Barbie one. And you can book me directly there. And um, I'm also going to be, I have a core wound clearing eight week course as well called the oh, infinity wow. life. And that one is absolutely brilliant. And it's something that we're also can be a legacy of scaling that into the communities. It's already an international community to be able to go into every nook and cranny in the world and it's already going into spanish communities and other oh. ones too where people in their own communities can connect with people that look like them to be able to get their core wounds cleared so definitely oh, um Bobby. you know it's called a humanitarian and it's something of where i'm i have friends who are humanitarians and ultimately that's that is my goal to be of service to as many people as i humanly possibly can and Amazing. i just are really I'm I'm just so grateful. The gratitude is the most important thing about all these things that manifest. Once you're done with that, you have to stay in the gratitude. And once it comes, you have to be in thankfulness all the time about that. So if the audience go to barbielayton.com, there's loads of information there. And if yeah. uh, you're watching this show, the notes will contain how to link with Barbie. We have another episode with Barbie coming up where we're going to actually talk about um, her books and her courses in more detail. This is just your intro to the gorgeous human that is Barbie Layton. And I encourage you to reach out and connect with her. She is an amazingly beautiful human being. Barbie Layton, oh. thank you so much for being on the Everyday Business Show with me today. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> is that possible? That was a question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Is that possible? That was a question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Is that possible? That was a question for myself.